fly won't take you to the stars. Use the metal for a boat and you won't sail too far. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal clouds about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret Can be a pain. Stop sitting in the dark, stirring metal parts about. You will change your life forever when you figure out. The secret pin Let this happen again. Chico? Chico. Forgive my curiosity, but what are you doing? Well, you know, I'm just talking to myself. I see, but why? Such a limited social circle. With other people, it turns out worse. Is it tasty? <laughs> and who's doing the dishes? Um, I would with pleasure, but uh, it's just that today I can't. Your pies are simply poetry. It would be a crime to disturb them with the prose of life. <laughs> and what are you going to come up with? Uh, well, the thing is... Uh... <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. It's always the same. Uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Hold this. Oh, but I. Uh... <laughs> Here. Oh. Up there. Oh. I understand the issue. You're in need of... A weapon. A, a, a weapon? Powerful and age-old, like our very civilization. Huh? This weapon will protect you against your bitterest rivals, fears. Complexes and inhibitions. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> With this weapon, you'll be victorious in any, even the most desperate predicament. Huh? This weapon is words. But that's uh, like you mean figuratively speaking. You mean. I mean it in the most direct sense. You need to learn to speak, my friend. Learn to speak. But it's just that I sort of already can. Lie. Delusion. Illusion. Self-deception. Hmm. I'm talking about the highest manifestation of communication skills and powers of persuasion. Rhetoric. Uh, p -p 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 apologies. I seem to have switched off at the word Ill -ill -ill illusion. I'm not surprised. Rhetoric is the science of bringing your thoughts to others. It is the science of understanding. Without rhetoric, all of our actions become impossible. Friends cannot agree on whether to go to the movies or go for a walk. A teacher cannot explain to a student a new topic. And politicians cannot conclude a peace treaty. One of the first scientific descriptions of rhetoric belongs to Aristotle, a man who, without exaggeration, stood at the rise of all modern science. In ancient Rome, rhetoric was developed by the great orator and politician Cicero, who was such an outstanding master of language and style that neither before nor since could anyone come close to him in terms of mastering the riches of the Latin language. 
Even until now, his works still haven't lost their significance. Although since ancient times, many outstanding philosophers, orators, poets, and linguists have even further developed this remarkable science. Yeah, that sort of weapon wouldn't do me any harm. In that case, off to the training gym. Follow me, hop to it. But this isn't a gymnasium. This is a library. That was a metaphor. Huh? A what? Uh, this may be more tricky than I first thought. Well, looks like we'll be starting from a blank page, as they say. A blank page? Do not take it literally. That was also a metaphor. Ancient theorists distinguished three kinds of elocution. Festive. Today is a great holiday. Deliberative. Let's think whether to watch this series further. And judicial. Chico is to blame. <laughs> but he isn't to blame. <laughs> a good speech must convince, delight, and excite. But first, it has to be composed. And the composition consisted of four parts. First, it was necessary to find the material, then arrange it, then find the correct words, then memorize them. After that comes the fifth, very serious part, the actual delivery. The arrangement of speech was based on a solid scheme, introduction, presentation, development, and conclusion. Understandably, the most important part of rhetoric is delivery. The great Greek orator Demosthenes loved to talk. In elocution, the first thing is delivery, and the second is delivery, and the third is also delivery. And here, the orator in waiting has the aid of a variety of exercises, from breathing techniques to tongue twisters, and of course, an increased vocabulary. And so, after three months of intense training, what do you have to say for yourself, my friend? How is it that I previously never noticed that the whole world, the whole universe, is a world, a myriad of words strummed gently on the strings of harmony, striking a sensational feeling of boundless power to you, my esteemed teacher. I've taught you everything I know. Now go and win the hearts of the people. Today isn't my uh, turn. I've, uh, 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 I've, 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 I've unfinished I just poem. don't have the time. Not ever. Hmm. <laughs> oh. oh. Chico, we were just discussing whose turn it is to clean up as it so happens. Hmm? Uh-huh. We were just picking straws. Everyone took one. There's only one left. The longest. Looks like that's yours. Ahem, uh ahem. I have a dream, you see. The dream that the day will come when all of the lowlands will rise and all of the hills and mountains will descend. The hitherto uneven terrain will be turned into plains. The curved places will be leveled, and that the grandeur of equality will at once be before us, and that we may all believe in it. For this is my solemn hope. Wow. <gasps> what was that? I don't know. Why, that's simply wonderful. That was a metaphor. Carlene, to teach Chico to do that? Oh, teach me too. I mean, uh, the way he... Express himself. Well, yeah, yeah. Will you teach me? And us. 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 Yes, why not? <sighs> I've taught you everything I know. Now go and awaken any sleeping hearts with your words. Ha! Hey! Oh. Uh-huh. 
Oh, uh, wow. Uh, so, what's happening? How much longer must you test my patience? How much further will you boastfully display of your It's insult? regrettable to note your inability to conduct at least some semblance of a reasonable and sober debate. And that's why, with full moral responsibility, I would like to state that the conclusion has been predetermined. No one else's version is worthy of attention. Except Against the backdrop knowledge. of such all-encompassing processes, it becomes evident that the insignificance of our impulses... What on earth is going on? We are solving an interpersonal conflict. What kind of conflict? To be honest, I doubt we'd be able to recall the root of the problem. Seriously? You don't even remember the cause of the debate? That is hardly of import. What is critical is who is able to substantiate his truth through the power of rhetoric. You've all gone mad. Look at yourselves. You've learned to speak wonderfully. But now you have to master an even more important skill. Listening to hear the interlocutor and to be able to understand his point of view is the true basis of dialogue. That's what the principles of true rhetoric are all about. That was cool. So literary. So nuanced. And yet so succinct. I think we can all agree that Colin is the victor in this debate. Impact with oncoming asteroid in five that's it. Four. We were arguing about which way Three. to turn uh -huh. to avoid the collision. Two. Uh -huh. Well, that's One. not good. Whoa. Uh. Whoa. And what does rhetoric suggest in such situations? Sometimes, my friend, it's better just to keep quiet. In this time, it would have been possible to make a whole mountain of pancakes and Everest. Uh, how much longer do we have to wait? Yes, but don't forget that everyone loves Olga's concoction. So it will take more than one Everest. You know, last night I had such a funny dream. We were all sitting at the table waiting for our favorite treat, and then Olga <laughs> brought sandwiches instead of pancakes. <laughs> God forbid. Saturday is pancake day. <laughs> Why would she do that? She has made... Sandwiches! <laughs> We've suddenly run out of milk, I'm afraid, so here we are. Oh. Oh, my God! So that means you had a premonition in your dream. Uh, most likely a mere coincidence. As soon as you set up a new password, you must immediately write it down. But, but I did write it down. Oh, in my diary. <laughs> Am I gonna have to try every single combination now? That would be one way. There are only a thousand options. <sighs> You're going to laugh, but this exact situation happened to me in my dream last night. Oh yeah? Is that supposed to be funny? Allow me. Let me just... I'm really starting to get used to this. <laughs> well, hey, I'm first. Uh, sorry. What can I do for you? Doc, old pal, I need your advice. Could you glance at your dreams and tell me which fertilizer is best to use? Oh, come on. That's not scientific at all. You foresaw the code combination out of a thousand options. What other kind of approach does one need? Why don't you lay down, <laughs> take a nap, have a quick look about those fertilizers. 
Hmm. Well, maybe for the purposes of experimentation, huh? <laughs> Rock of my baby on the treetops when the wind blows the rain around. And the ball makes the baby will fall. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. I've had enough sleep to last me the rest of my life. Hey, but no need to scare us. Well, what are we going to do without your, uh, premonitions? Well, you managed without them before, didn't you? Oh, don't remind me of those dark days of uncertainty. So let's put that aside. We all have so many questions for you. <clears throat> enough! I'm sorry, but this is just too much. Here, got mint and ginger for the nerves. Oh, thank you. You can't only really rely on your premonition in... Auntie's recipes never fails. <laughs> Great. I'm asleep again. Why do I always fall for the trick with the sleeping pills? Questions, questions, some solid questions. And how convenient it is to receive answers to them in a dream. Uh, honestly, I would prefer to do it without the clues. Commendable. But can you answer all the questions yourself? Huh? The car can go at a speed of 60 kilometers per hour. How far will it travel in an hour? That's elementary. 60 kilometers. In an ideal world, yes. And if the road is uneven... <laughs> or if it runs out of gas. Or if instead of the road, there is quicksand. What? What are you getting at? To the fact that not all tasks have ideal conditions and predictable outcome. Roads, for example, may not even exist at all. See what I mean? In my dream, I came to an enlightenment. We'll be able to do perfectly well without premonitions if... Oh, oh, oh. Looks like I'm still sleeping. He's still asleep. How long does that tea of yours last for? Who knows? <laughs> Looks like I overdid it with the dosage. Should have checked the dosage with a clairvoyant first or, or something. I just can't wait any longer. I urgently need to choose what I'm going to choose from for next time. Well, I don't know what I'm gonna do now. This is the Dream Watcher. Now we'll be able to watch all of Doko's dreams right on the screen. Cool. We won't even have to think of any questions. Uh-huh. We can just copy what we see on the screen. <laughs> Most unusual, I'm six. Well, I think it's most harmonious, actually. Why rock the boat? The prophecies will show us everything. <laughs> Wow. 
Warning. Overheating detected in the main cabin. What's going on? want to sleep enough already why do you need to be told we already know many ways to put out a fire uh-huh but how do we choose the right way <sighs> onboard computer apply depressurization of the main cabin request approved holy carrots voila and all because fire and vacuums cannot coexist. And how do we clear all this up? Well, all I can say is don't look at me. Crash has four carrots. He ate one. How many are left? One, two, three. That's correct, three. In this puzzle, there is a clearly stated condition known way ahead of the solution and only one correct answer. Such tasks are called closed questions, which are often found in textbooks. And even if the task is difficult, in the end, we can always find the answer. But in real life, problems with ideal conditions almost don't exist. How fast is it to get from the Arctic to Africa? What happened to that second sock? How do you make the tastiest sandwich? Such tasks are called open questions. With them, there isn't only one correct answer or well-known ways of solving them. In fact, there can be several correct answers. Closed tasks teach you how to use standard logical tools and perseverance. And open questions develop the desire for knowledge, critical thinking, and most importantly, free thinking. The more open questions you can answer, the more creative and open your mind will become. And you won't need hints and guesswork because... <sighs> What's the matter with me? In, in this time, it would have been possible to bake a whole mountain of pancakes, an Everest. Yes, but don't forget that everyone loves Olga's concoction. So, it'll take more than one Everest. <laughs> you know, last night I had such a funny dream. Uh, uh, Sandwiches! <laughs> <laughs> We've suddenly run out of milk, I'm afraid. So, uh, there. Uh. So, what was your dream about? Though, it was really a load of nonsense. No point in retelling it. waiting when you wait the seconds drag on and on like they're teasing you and when you at last get what you were waiting for you don't get any satisfaction out of it no joy at all our whole life is waiting 
We wait for the water to boil or for inspiration to occur. We wait for news or wait our turn or for the right moment. In summer, we wait for winter. And in winter, we wait for summer. We wait for a birthday or New Year's and we wait for the weekend. Calendars and clocks are the worst inventions in the world. But even without them, we'd still be waiting for something. How is it possible to derive any pleasure from this gardening? It's simply impossible. How do we wait till this grows into a tomato? <laughs> Don't wait too long. It's a cucumber. What's the difference? What's your secret, Barry? How do you have enough patience to wait for everything to bloom? I just love gardening. And I couldn't live without it. During winter? In winter, you can't do any gardening. How do you have the patience to wait for the spring? In the winter, I sleep, and then it's springtime. You, you fall asleep to avoid waiting. That's genius. <laughs> but how? How can you sleep through the entire winter? Well, it's so cold that all the organism's processes slow down. Interesting. And that affects all organisms or just their ones? All of them, I would think. I read a few days ago that they found a frozen frog, like a block of ice. They unfroze it and presto, it was jumping all around. Uh, uh, why do you care? Uh, well, uh, all your functions are slowed down, and you can sleep as much as you want and when you want. If it really works, then no more waiting. some sort of new fad sitting in refrigerators. It worked with the frog. Then, then froze him and he was good as new. But you're not a frog. <laughs> you're very much a warm-blooded sheep. <laughs> and you need to keep your frame warm. <laughs> Although overheating's not good either. Our ideal body temperature is 36.6. Changing our temperature up or down by as little as one degree and we would become very cold or hot. If our temperature changes by as much as four degrees, then watch out. Our lives are in danger. All of this sensitivity is due to the fact that our body's vital processes are carried out with the help of enzyme. These are substances which accelerate or slow down various chemical reactions in the organism. And these enzymes are very sensitive to changes in temperature. For most of them, the ideal temperature is 37 degrees. But at 40, they are irreparably damaged. Due to this enzyme dependency, we need to protect ourselves from extremes. That's why we wear hats in winter and go swimming or hide in the shade in summer. Instead of hiding in refrigerators, at least spare a thought for your enzymes. And so I had to wait again. I was waiting to get better. But I couldn't stop thinking about the frozen frog. I wanted to study this issue more closely. And so far as I never had any patience, I decided to use the technology of the future. Spheroscope! How can I freeze myself so that I can wake up later on and not wait? And that's how I learned about the fascinating science of cryogenics. Cryonics is the science of preserving biological objects with the aid of freezing. It turns out that lowering the body's temperature slows down the molecule's thermal motion and therefore the speed of all chemical reactions. 
At freezing, our body doesn't just save stress from unnecessary waiting, it also stops getting cold. In the future, scientists learn to freeze astronauts during long flights between planets. Before, of course, teleportation was invented. Astronauts could remain in this condition for years and not grow old or die from boredom. The unpleasant part turned out to be that our bodies are comprised of about 70% water. And when frozen, water turns into ice which tears tissue. Yuck. It was easier for insects and frogs. Their blood contains a thing called glycerin. This glycerin protects their organisms from damage while frozen. Ha! <laughs> and none the worse, ha! <laughs> For the more unlucky ones, a new method was created. Instantaneous freezing. Due to the rapid decrease in temperature, water molecules aren't able to collide with each other and form ice crystals, which means that our bodies stay whole and safe. Hey. Needs to be done. And now, after a few improvements, the refrigerator would be able to relieve me of any waiting quickly and safely. The moment I had been waiting for when I no longer had to wait for anything or anyone. Wait until it cools down. Just a minute. It was a wonderful time. I had completely forgotten what waiting was, but what happened next was totally unexpected. <laughs> How much time did I spend frozen? Centuries? Or maybe even millennia? What happened to all my friends? What happened with our civilization? I don't know. Maybe I would have stayed frozen if Spearjet hadn't crashed on this deserted planet. I understood too late that our life is expectation, and all its moments are invaluable, even those that are long and tedious, and I had missed them all. And now, all I had left was my last wait for myself. I don't understand. Where's the ice cream? I told you it was empty. We dragged that heavy thing around for no reason. Hey, guys. 
<laughs> Everything's okay. What could possibly happen on this forsaken planet? Joko's carrying out his experiments while we all die of boredom out here. Uh, I just wanted to eat some ice cream. And Ben, for lack of anything else to do, is overhauling the sphere jet. My friends, I've discovered a fascinating anomaly. I'm afraid we'll have to stay here for a couple more weeks. Oh, really? are you enough gotta get enough. me. Oh, hey. Enough's enough. That's okay. Oh. We'll wait. Metal people, keep it up. One, two, put your beak into it, or your snout, whatever's in the middle of your face. Whoa, hey there, sweaty sports people. <laughs> Anybody seen my honey? Oh, there you are. <laughs> hey, Sky Bear, why do you always miss our daily exercise sessions? Uh, is that a joke? <laughs> There's no gravity here in space. All that exercise for what? There's no need to walk up here. But you won't be up here forever. You are planning on going back to Earth someday, right? Well, of course, I'll go back sometime. <laughs> Though if I'm being truthful, I'd live like this forever. My friend, you must see the importance of staying in shape, especially when you're in no-gravity environments. Your body needs it. But just floating is awesome. You should never take your health for granted, you know. If you don't look after yourself, someday you'll be sorry. My health is fine, thanks. I'm strong as a bear. <laughs> Maybe for now, but when you're back in gravity again, your bones and muscles are not going to be nearly as strong as they once were. That might be true for all you guys, but we bears have muscles like steel, and our bones are like granite. <laughs> well, you're sort of right, but I still don't think you're getting it. Incredibly. Our bones are about four times stronger than steel. The secret to our bones' amazing strength lies in what bones are made of and how they're put together. The outer layer of our bones is a hard, compact mineral composite, but the inside is a collagen-based honeycomb matrix. That makes the bones somewhat flexible, and that flexibility protects us from breaks and helps make our bones able to withstand enormous pressure. If the entire bone were just the hard substance, it would be more vulnerable to breakage. Glass is a good example. If you smash glass with a brick, uh, don't do that, it falls to pieces. But notice that when glass is broken with a gunshot, if the cracks don't spread, the glass will stay intact. The cracks are what bring about further breakage. So, the flexible collagen within our bones prevents cracks and also prevents cracks from spreading, making our bones not just stronger, but less breakable. Told you they're strong. Well, didn't mean to interrupt your sweat festival. Have fun riding bikes and don't go anywhere. Toodles! Just forget what the bear said. Just five more minutes of pedaling, then you can go fly all you want. Ah. Oh. Just beautiful. shorts the controls out, and this moon's gravity pulled us down. Can't say the view does very much for me. Uh, I'll see any hotels. Uh, uh, I don't know about you, but oh, my seatbelt seems mm, to be really stuck. 
I can't get out of this thing at all. <laughs> Don't bother to try. The short will have affected every electronic system on the ship. We need to turn on the emergency generator. Then all the systems will reboot. But who's going to turn it on if we're all hanging here upside down? Well, there's Barry. Well, we're going to be here for a while. What? just happened please what well whatever it was is a humdinger of a snafu <laughs> oh. what's going on with me something's really wrong oh gee golly i can hardly move and i'm a bear a great big strong bear somebody help me <laughs> Hey, that's... that's Barry! Oh, Barry! Uh, uh, hey, Barry! Barry! Help me! Oh, boy. Uh, are you there? I can't see you. You ho uh, Just look up! What are you doing up there? Waiting to be rescued by a bear. All right. Here I come. Oh, turnips! Uh, what is happening to me? Uh, I can hardly move. Must have broken something in the crash. It's what we warned you about, Mr. Steel and Granite. Your body got used to no gravity. You haven't used your muscles in a long time, and they've gotten weak. Modern humans appeared somewhere between 100,000 and 200,000 years ago. And now humans have become the most powerful creatures on Earth. Our bones are stronger than steel, and our muscles can be strong and resistant. Of course, this wouldn't be the case without the effort of regular exercise. What now? <laughs> Bears are just born strong. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's true that with all our convenient inventions, physical labor is not as necessary to ensure survival as it once was. You can order pizza for dinner by moving a couple of fingers. And going to work just means getting into the car, pressing the pedals, and turning the steering wheel. I'm working up quite an appetite. Turning this wheel... Hitting buttons on a keyboard. Oh. <laughs> While our lifestyles may have changed, our inner construction is essentially the same as our ancient ancestors. All of our modern conveniences have led to an increase in eating unhealthy food and a decrease in exercising. And as a result, many people are now overweight. In fact, almost two billion people worldwide suffer from the disease of obesity. Our bodies naturally conserve energy use and adjust to our intake and activity level. If we don't move enough, our metabolism slows and we lose muscle strength and bone mass. That's why it's so important for astronauts to exercise. I get it now. The exercise. I'll join in from now on, guys. Congrats on the breakthrough and all. But could you maybe get us down from here first? We need to turn on the emergency generator. Or else we'll be hanging here forever. But you have to be careful. Your bones are fragile right now. And while the gravity here on the moon is lower than it is on Earth, one careless move could cause a serious injury, even to a big, strong bear. And if you get hurt, we're all in serious trouble. But, you know, no pressure. Where's that generator? I hope it isn't far. The generator turns on with a big red lever. It's near the control panel. You can't miss it. Hmm? Uh, well, that couldn't be in a worse place. Careful. Uh, careful, careful. Uh, this is... No big deal at all for a normal bear, and a really bad idea for the bear with glass bones. Oh, <laughs> 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 
I am a big, brave bear. But you have to be careful. One careless move could cause a serious injury, even to a big, strong bear. Attention, the emergency generator has been activated. While many people dream of simply taking a pill to control weight gain and prevent the loss of muscle mass, no such pill exists. And that's a good thing, because the best prevention and the best cure for obesity is eating good, healthy food and getting plenty of daily exercise. Then you'll be strong, healthy, and ready for anything. Keep it up! One, two, one, two! That's it! Put my ears into it! Hey there, sweaty sports people! Ah. <laughs> ah. Don't forget the tail of the broken bear! Or this could happen to you. Never! Faster! Faster! <gasps> Exercise, yeah! Take care of your muscles and bones, or you could end up exactly like me. <laughs> birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rosa. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Fireworks! Fireworks! The natives are getting restless. Hurry up there, Daco. Cool your horns, my impatient friend. Accuracy is most crucial in this process, as is being cautious. Ah. <laughs> Be careful with these things, Wally, please. They can very easily. <laughs> Go off by themselves. What? What have we done? Please say you can invent more fireworks. <sighs> well, first, this was not remotely my fault. And then second, where can I find more firework ingredients? We're flying through space. This is bad. Although... Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. What's happening? It's fireworks time, isn't it? Just give me a few moments here, my lovely birthday girl. There's a little question I'd like to ask everybody first. Here it comes. What do you know about the life cycle of a star? Uh, what do you mean, a star's life cycle? Stars just shine forever, right? <laughs> no siree. Just like everything else, stars come into the universe, they live, and they die. The process just takes much longer with stars. Very much longer, in fact. It takes billions of years. A new star is created in a cloud of dust and gas called a nebula and consists mostly of hydrogen and helium atoms. 
When the dust and gas become heated through compression, if the mass of the cloud is dense enough, the temperature during the compression, as well as pressure, becomes so high that the atomic nuclei start joining and thermonuclear reactions take place. An enormous amount of energy is generated and the compressed gas clouds start shining, turning into a star. Are you saying there was a time our sun was a cloud like that? Like every star was, yes. But then with time, it transformed quite a lot, growing into the sun with which we're familiar. Thousands of years later, planets gradually formed around the sun. And one of these orbs eventually developed life. We're that life. While I love party killing science lectures as much as the next girl, I was promised fireworks. Yeah, Rosa. <laughs> but still, gee, this is interesting. And can you tell us the age of our sun? Uh, we can roughly estimate that it's in the vicinity of 4.5 billion years old. Oh. It's been around a while. <laughs> Certainly it's mature, not a little baby anymore. Once a star has been formed, nuclear fusion occurs constantly in its core using up hydrogen and releasing immense energy, enough to push against the force of gravity and keep the star in balance for billions of years. But this process is not infinite. Eventually, the hydrogen will be depleted and the star will either collapse or explode. Goodness, are you trying to tell us that our very own sun is going to, I mean, well, uh, you know, come to an end? What? Our sun will die? No more parties or fireworks? Uh, hold me! Oh, uh, save the planet! Save the whales! Hey! It's a madhouse! A madhouse! <laughs> there is no need for any of us to panic! <laughs> the life cycle of our beloved sun will not end soon at all. I'd say we have about five billion years before that. <laughs> I'm beginning to think nothing's going to blow up here. Are you telling me my birthday isn't worth fire in the sky? Have patience, our dear porcine guest of honor. Something far better than fireworks is on the way. Yeah, <laughs> lots better, yeah. <clears throat> it is, right? Precious friends, we have quite an enchanting opportunity to witness the end of the life cycle of one of the largest stars in our galaxy. May I present Betelgeuse? Betelgeuse is one of the largest known stars and is one of the brightest stars in the constellation of Orion. Betelgeuse is 700 times bigger than our sun and approximately 100,000 times brighter. As is the case with all giant stars, Betelgeuse burns its hydrogen faster than smaller stars. It is believed to be in a late stage of stellar evolution and is expected to explode as a supernova within the next million years. And what happens to stars when they get uh, to the end of their cycle? Hey, I know! They fall right out of the sky! If you see one falling, you can wish on it and stuff! But they're not as pretty as fireworks are! <laughs> You're wrong there! The final act in the life of a star is an awesome spectacle! Better than the best fireworks display ever! We've come to the stellar neighborhood of Betelgeuse to view this breathtaking cosmic wonder! Should we get closer? I can't see it! Just a bunch of regular old stars! So what? If we move closer to the star, is the ship going to melt or something? I'm melting! This vessel is capable of withstanding ridiculously high temperatures! There is no need to move closer, trust me. From this position, everyone will see everything clearly. You can start the show now! Preferably while it's still my birthday. Um... Uh, uh, well, frankly speaking, it should have already started, according to all my calculations. I don't understand it. Uh, sorry, let me just calculate all of it again. Stop, sheep! You know how to drive the silly spaceboat, right? Let's fly a little closer to this star action. But, uh, didn't Daco say we could see it all from right here? Well, Daco said a lot of stuff. 
He told us this thing was supposed to start hours ago. What if the show has started, but we're just too far away to see it? Sweet Wally, you're always so kind to me. Won't you give me this? For my birthday? Closer! Come on, my closer! Oh, this is awesome! <laughs> well, it is crazy warm, all right, but from here we will totally see everything! <laughs> Turns out I just forgot to carry the wand, silly me! And now I can say with absolute confidence, the spectacle will indeed be starting quite soon! Ah, uh, um, why are we right next to the star? Much nicer view, right? I just thought we'd be able to see everything so much better from here. You just don't understand a star's life! At the end of the life of a star, the close of its life cycle is an intense explosion! <laughs> Ten seconds from now, Beetlejuice will increase its volume a thousand times. When there is no hydrogen left in the center of the star, fusion stops and the star begins its collapse. This leads to intense pressure and heat, which in turn will lead to an explosion. Exploding stars become much bigger and brighter for a time. Sometimes the explosion of a star is the only time it is visible to us here on Earth. Exploding stars are called supernova. Betelgeuse may become a supernova sometime soon, although nobody can say exactly when it will happen it's more likely that the flash of that supernova will be seen by a future generation. Perhaps they will see a second sun in the sky. Beetlejuice has grown so much, it's nearer the Earth. In fact, it seems it's shining bright enough now, it's able to give our sun a little friendly competition. Isn't it just beautiful? It's the best birthday in the history of forever. Forget silly old fireworks. I got a 